Right, good afternoon and welcome to A2 Physics Online. We're going to pick up um, where we left off last week uh, with our next lesson, which is about electromagnetic induction. Now, um, I'm going to deliver this lesson as if we were all in the laboratory, um, but I'm going to deliver it to video and you're going to watch it on the video. Um, and we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a little bit gonzo. This is not going to be any of your YouTube influencer, highly produced stuff. This is just as if we were in the lab. Right. So this lesson is about electromagnetic induction. Um, here are some learning objectives. Remember those? Um, so in this lesson, we're going to learn that an electromotive force or an EMF, a voltage, can be induced or created in a conductor, a wire or a coil. Um, for an EMF to be induced, a conductor must move through a magnetic field, or a magnet must move relative to a conductor. Electromagnetic induction can be described by two laws, which are Faraday's law and Lenz's law. And finally, we can calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF that's produced in a conductor. Now, to do that, we're going to do the following. We're going to demonstrate electromagnetic induction by doing three experiments. We're going to explain electromagnetic induction in terms of a model. And the model is going to be flux cutting and flux linking, which are slight variations on the same theme. Then we will state Faraday's law and Lentz's law formally. And finally, from those laws, we'll derive an equation from which we can calculate induced EMF. Now, uh, your references for this are your textbook, the A2 physics book, and we're at page 145, and this section goes on to 150. So study that. Um, also notes, the notes that I have here, I'm going to communicate to you in some form. Right, let's have a little recap. Um, so what we looked at in previous lessons was the idea of electromagnetism. And we know that a permanent magnet has a magnetic field around it, which we can represent with field lines, something like that. Um, we know that if you have an electric current, for example, a single straight wire carrying a current, then there will be a magnetic field generated or created around that. And we know that the magnetic field lines are concentric circles with their direction indicated by the right-hand grip rule, like so. Um, and if we have a wire that's wound into a coil, looking something like this, and we pass a current through that coil, then that also produces a magnetic field around the coil. And we can plot the magnetic field, and it looks a little bit like that of the bar magnet. So we get something like that. There's a right-hand rule um, which gives us the polarity of the magnet. So this will be the north pole end, this will be the south pole end. Um, therefore, the field lines are going out of the north and into the south, like so. Okay. Um, and so on and so forth. Now, in both of these cases, what we see is that an electric current current of electricity. Okay, little interruption there. Hopefully we won't get interrupted again. Okay, so in these cases, what we've got is a current of electricity um, and that produces a magnetic field. Um, and that's what's happening in the case of the single wire. It's what's happening in the case of the coil. It's what happens with an electromagnet. 
and that is electromagnetism. Now, um, in your mind, it's a good idea if you sort of draw a line underneath that or even put up a wall, because this is electromagnetism where a current of electricity produces a magnetic field. Um, electromagnetic induction is kind of the other way around. Um, it's where um, magnetism produces electricity. Um, and that is uh, what we call electromagnetic induction. Now, we'll see what we mean as we go through and have a look at our demonstrations. So, um, if we go back to our lesson, what we're going to do is try and demonstrate the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction by doing some little experiments. Okay, here's experiment number one. Now what we've got here is just a conductor, a piece of copper wire. Now it's insulated, but inside that's just copper. And uh, we've got it hooked up to a ammeter. So this is our uh, most sensitive meter. There's no shunt on there. So it's um, going to have uh, a full scale deflection of 50 microamps. So it's as sensitive as we can make it. And all we've got connected to that is a wire. Okay. Now notice there is no battery here. There's nothing to cause a current of electricity to flow. It's just a, just a wire basically. And at the moment there is no current flowing. Okay. Now if we bring in magnets. So we bring in uh, a magnetic field or two magnets like that and we're going to bring the wire up and hold it in the magnetic field. Now when we do that nothing happens. Okay, The uh, wire is just sitting in the field and nothing is happening. Now if I move the wire through the field, I don't know if you can see, there's a tiny, tiny movement of the needle. I'm not sure if you can see that. So when the wire moves to the field, there's a little bit of motion. Right, another interruption. May have to close the damn door. Okay, um, it's hard to see what's going on there, but if we double up, if we get a loop of wire like so, and we double the loop up, move that through, Think that's discernible. You can now see there's a little tiny, tiny motion. Okay, so what we're seeing is a little current flowing in the wire. Um, and if there's a current, there must be an EMF to drive that current. So we're inducing a little tiny, tiny voltage in the wire. Now, notice that the voltage only appears when the wire moves through the field, like so. Okay. There's no flicker at all when there's no mo motion. Um, and also, it only works when the magnetic field is there. Okay, so it's the combination of a moving wire and a magnetic field that produces this little effect. Now, that's hard to see, so we'll move on to the next experiment, which is if we get not just a single wire, but a long wire that's been looped together into a long coil. Okay, so that's a, a coil of about a hundred turns. Now, if we connect our galvanometer to that, like so, and the magnet I'm going to use this time is a bar magnet. Now, if I bring the coil up to the magnet, so the magnet stays still, and the coil comes up. Fingers crossed. Yes. Okay. So do you see what happened there? When the coil approaches the magnet, we get a little flicker on the meter. Do that again. Okay. So when the coil moves uh, relative to the magnet, 
a little current flows and that means that a little EMF has been induced in this coil. Okay. Now notice what happens when I pull the coil away. Okay. Can you see that we get another little flicker but it's in the opposite direction. Now we get no flick when there's no movement. Okay. Um, so there has to be and we get no flick as well if there's no magnet. So the conductor has to move relative to the magnetic field. Um, and when it does so, an EMF is induced in the coil, and that's electromagnetic induction. Now, also notice that what happens if I keep the coil still and move the magnet into the coil. Same as before. And when I pull it out, same as before, the direction is reversed. So what has to happen is that there has to be relative motion. Either the magnet has to move relative to the coil or the coil has to move relative to the magnet. And when it does, an EMF is induced in the coil. The direction of the EMF depends on the direction of motion. When the motion is reversed, the direction of the EMF is also reversed. Um, what about the size? Well, you notice that with a single wire, we got almost undetectable EMF. But with a coil of many turns, we get a much bigger EMF, which we can detect easily. Um, if I push the magnet in slowly, we get a small current, so a small EMF. If I put it in a little bit quicker, I'm not sure if that's very convincing. Um, it looks about the same. Okay, the idea here is that if we increase the speed of the motion, uh, we'll get a larger EMF. Um, okay, but we can see that the size of the EMF is going to depend on different factors about the setup. Dear, oh dear, I think I may cry. Right, uh, where were we? Oh yes, okay, so the induced EMF depends on various factors. It's going to depend on the strength of the magnetic field. It's going to depend on the speed of the relative motion. It's going to depend on the number of turns on the coil and so on. So that is what we're going to formulate into, into Faraday's law. Um, the direction of the EMF depends on the direction of motion, which is what we're going to formulate into Lenz's law. Okay, so that's the second demonstration and in a moment we'll do the third. Okay, now in this experiment um, we've got no permanent magnet, um, and but we do have two coils. Now, here's a coil. You can't see it, but it's inside the box. This is a 2 by 120, so that's a 240 turn coil inside here. And it's got a hole in the middle. Um, and on the other side, we've got another coil which is exactly the same. Now, this coil is not connected to any battery. It's just connected to the ammeter. Um, this one, on the other hand, is connected to a battery. And we can pass a current through the coil by making this connection here. Okay. Now, the two coils are placed side by side. Now, we're putting a an iron core through the middle um, to make the effect a little bit more obvious. Now, what's going to happen here is if I make this connection, that will send a current through this coil. Um, and then we'll see what happens in the other coil. Right, three, two, one, go. Ooh. And again. Okay, now. Could you see that what happens there is that when uh, a current flows in this coil, um, then it causes a brief flick of current in the other coil. Um, in fact, if I use a single cell, which is not quite so violent, that's interesting, there, okay. And then when I break the circuit, 
we get a flick in the other direction. Okay, I'll just do that again. If I make the circuit, we get a brief flick. And then when I break the circuit, we get a flick in the other direction. So what happened there? Now I want to stop this because I'm over 15 minutes. Uh, yes. Okay, we'll finish this off and then I'll have to edit it, I think. Okay, so when we make the circuit on this side, um, then what we're seeing is that uh, we're passing a current through this coil. Now, if we're passing a current through it, that sets up a magnetic field. And the magnetic field is picked up or affects the second coil, and that causes the EMF to, to appear in it. And so we see a current. Now, when the current in the first coil is steady and flowing steadily, then there is no EMF seen in the secondary. Um, because the current just goes down. It only flows when the current is made, or when the circuit is made, and when it is broken. It doesn't flow while happen while there's a steady current flowing in the primary coil, in the first coil. Um, when we break the circuit, then we get another flick, but it's in the opposite direction. So, an EMF is induced in the second coil when um, a current begins to flow in the primary coil and the magnetic field is set up. Um, while the magnetic field is steady, there's nothing induced in the second coil, but when the uh, current in the first coil is switched off and the magnetic field disappears, then you get an induced EMF in the second coil. Okay. That's a little bit confused, but I'm not going to redo it. Um, and in the next video, we'll try to explain how this is all happening.